Now, something I didn't touch on at the very beginning is accuracy. If there's one word that best describes this industry, I've heard fun, I've heard you've name of the word, I've heard it. But what I don't hear, but it's already understood and nobody says it because you just understand it automatically, is you want accuracy. The ultimate goal in quilting is accuracy. That's what your quilting is judged by. So whether you're a beginner quilter, an intermediate quilter, or an expert quilter, you're judged by accuracy. The only difference between someone that starts quilting today and someone that has been quilting for 40 years is their accuracy level. That is the only difference. Now, with that being said, we're gonna jump right into the next product, okay? The next product that I wanna share with you is the rulers. The first thing I want you to notice with my ruler is I have no numerical numbers on the side of the ruler. This is a ruler without a rule on it, okay? It sounds funny to you, but it's a ruler without a rule. There's two reasons for that, okay? The reason why I don't have a rule on my ruler, and this is something I'm gonna cover in a little bit, is because my mat is accurate. Now, once again, when I use the term they, I'm talking about quilters. They teach you when you have a mat, do not use your mat to measure with because your mat is inaccurate. That is another story for when I get to the mat, but that is also inaccurate. That is not true. Always, always use your mat, even if your mat's inaccurate. But like I said, we'll get to that in a minute. Now back to the ruler. Here's what's so special about the Martelli rulers. And I know you watching the video, the first thing you're gonna think of, the first thing out of your mouth, yeah, but I can't see you through it. If you are using your ruler to measure with, you're wasting your time. And if you think for one second using your ruler is making your quilts more accurate, that is wrong. And let me explain to you why, okay? Now, please forgive me, I'm not trying to sound arrogant or pompous by saying that, but I want you to really focus and pay attention on what I'm trying to teach you, okay? So let's get back to accuracy. Here is my question for you. In life, it doesn't matter what your occupation is. It doesn't matter if you're a dentist, a lawyer, a housewife, a quilter. It doesn't matter what you do. When you try to accomplish something in your life, the more steps you put in place to accomplish a certain procedure, the more chances you can make mistakes. For example, if it takes me 10 different steps to accomplish one goal, and I can come down here and I can take one step to accomplish that same goal, I have nine less chances of making a mistake, okay? Now, let's get back to your mats. Quilters tell you, they tell you, whatever you do, don't use your mat to measure with because most mats are inaccurate. That's wrong. Now, let me tell you why. When you take a ruler, this is what you do as a quilter. Let's say I'm cutting out a quilt block, okay? You'll take your fabric right here, and you'll take a ruler, and then you're gonna measure, cut, measure cut, measure cut, and measure cut. Every single time you take a measurement and cut, and then you take another measurement and cut, and take another measurement and cut, another measurement and cut, and you're done with that block, and you come do another block, and you do the same thing, here is my question to you, okay? Let's be really generous to you quilters out there. Let's pretend like you're doing six layers at a time, and they're all accurate, which, knowing using a traditional rotary cutter, that's not gonna be the case. But let's pretend like you're using the Martelli, and let's pretend like you're using your ruler to measure with, and let's pretend like you're doing six layers at a time. Every time you do six layers of fabric and you finish your quilt block and you bring six more layers out, here is my question to you. Is this six layers ever the same as the last six layers? Better yet, I won't get a better one for you. What about the next six layers I'm doing? So my point to you is every time you take six layers of fabric, they are never the same. Now let's get back to the ruler and the mat, what I was just discussing a minute ago. Mats are inaccurate. That's what they teach you. My mat is 100% accurate. I can't speak for anybody else's mats, but I can tell you what I hear from quilters. They say it's inaccurate. Even if the mat is inaccurate, I want you to understand what I'm about to tell you. When you put your fabric down and you use a ruler that doesn't have a rule and you use your mat, you're cutting out an extra step. At home, when you have a see-through ruler and you're measuring, you're measuring and then you're cutting. You know what I'm doing? I'm cutting, I'm cutting, I'm cutting, and I'm cutting, and I'm using the mat. So even if your mat is inaccurate, you're cutting out an extra step. The extra step is causing you a lot more inaccuracies than you'd think. Ladies and gentlemen, you cut quilts out, you know what I'm talking about. 
I have talked to millions and millions of quilters all around the world. They have the same issues. They have bad issues uh, with inaccuracies of the quilt. Well, when you're using your ruler to measure with and then you're cutting, you're, think about it. You're adding a complete extra step. If you don't believe me, try it at home. Stop using your see-through rulers. If you're, see, if you're using your see-through rulers, you are wasting your time and your accuracy is going downhill. So, back to my ruler, keeping that in mind, okay? I'm always using the ruler. Now, my ruler, the Martelli brand ruler, the Martelli brand ruler never slips and never slides. So the first thing that does for me, it allows me, remember, the quilters teach you to hold the ruler in the middle of your body. But if your ruler never slips and your ruler never slides, that allows you to take what you have been taught, which is wrong, cutting in the middle of your body, and it allows you to bring the ruler on the outside of your body, allowing you to keep that blade perfectly straight up and down. It takes very, very little pressure to hold this ruler. So even if there's fabric under it, now watch this. So I can take this right here and I, I can actually cut towards my ruler. Look at the perfect straight cut with no strands I left every single time I cut. Time in and time out, I always get a perfect um, cut. Now, also something that I wanted to share with uh, regarding the Martelli rulers. How many times, ladies, how many times have you, you put an acrylic ruler down and the first thing you do is you make a cut and then accidentally, <laughs> you laugh if you want, accidentally, first thing you do is bump your ruler. So what is it that you have to do? You have to start that process all over again. What if you're in your third cut? You've got to make four new cuts when you only had one left to go. You're wasting fabric. What does that do for your accuracy? What is this entire industry based on? It's based on accuracy. So here's what's great about the Martelli ruler. What happens if you accidentally bump your ruler? I want you to watch my fabric right here. When I bump my ruler, we have designed the ruler to trap your material to your cutting mat. So it doesn't matter if you bump your ruler or not, you never lose your cut line. So if you never lose your cut line, what does that do for your accuracy? What does that do for your time? Guess what, ladies? No more waste on your material. So this is a culmination of problem solving. Once again, I didn't wake up and say, hey, what can I bring to market to make money this time? No, every single product that Martelli has ever brought to the table is a culmination of problem solving that every sewer, quilter, and crafter in the world has. That is one of the reasons why we have been tremendously successful because we listen to our customers, we find out what the products are, and my job at Martelli, Dave Martelli's job at Martelli, is to find out how many people to do a certain application. If enough people do a certain application and everybody in the world is having the same problems, we make a solution. Now, I'm gonna get off the beaten track just for a second, I wanna share this with you. We, as far as I know, are the only company in this entire industry that is built on innovative inventions. You might go to a trade show or you might go to a, a Hobby Lobby or Joann's, you might go to a place like that and you might find a new product. Typically, let me tell you how that product comes to market, okay? Somebody loves to sew, quilt, or craft and they find a better way of doing what they love to do and they make it and they sell it. So they design a better mousetrap to make it easy what they love to do. That's not what we do at Martelli. We make better mice traps. The only thing that we do is invent for this industry. Now, so we already we've already discovered the ruler never slips and never slides. If you do bump the ruler, the fabric stays with it. Now, we also know that there's no rule on the ruler because we're gonna use my mat. And when I get to my next product, when we start talking about the mat, I'm gonna tell you why our mat is far superior. Now, if you go online to different chat groups or if you go on HSN and you see the reviews, you get mad rave reviews on how great our products are. And our mat is one of the top products that everybody raves about. And, and I'm gonna show you how our mat is accurate. But notice I have no rule on here and I'm using my mat to measure with. Now, a lot of people when they get my cutting system at home, when they buy it at a trade show, they love all the products. They love the rotary cutter, they love the mat, but they come up to me and they go, Dave, how do you use your ruler? I don't understand it. It's really, really simple. We can't make it any more simple than we have. You're gonna see some arrows right here. 
behind the arrows you're going to see lines okay so i'm going to get something let me get something that i can actually point with right here you're going to see the arrow right you're going to see the arrow right there and the arrow there's a line that goes up and it comes to a number right there and then you're going to see a line right there okay so you're going to see lines there and there so whatever it is from here follow the arrows so let's go from here to here okay from here to here from the edge of the ruler to here is one and a fourth. So if I want to cut a one and one fourth inch strip, I'm going to take it right here. Always notice my cutting position. I'm not up like this when I cut. I keep my wrist perfectly parallel. I should have covered this when we covered the rotary cutter. So for, for those that you don't know this, it's pretty much common sense, but some people get mixed up from time to time because of their traditional rotary cutters. When you use my cutter, you're not using it like this, like you do a traditional rotary cutter. The flatter the wrist, the easier it is to cut. For those, of the, for those of you ladies or men that have ever used a rolling pin, this is a rolling pin rolling cutter. It's used on the same principle. It's down and through with your palm. All your pressure comes from your palm right here. There should be no stress on the hand whatsoever. So now, back to my cutting position and learning how to use the ruler. We've just discovered that from here to here is one fourth. So if I want to cut a one and one fourth inch strip, let's not waste a lot of fabric here. Let's go right here. Notice I'm always cutting on the outside of my body, but I'm gonna square my material up right here, okay? I'm gonna move that, and then from here to here is one fourth. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna put my blade right there, and then I'm gonna cut right there. Now, what I'm gonna do real quick is share this with you. When you have an acrylic ruler, which everybody does if they don't have ours, if you're using an acrylic ruler, when you lift that ruler up, what happens is it creates a vacuum. That vacuum will take the fabric and it will shift it. So I wanna show you something, okay? I'm gonna pinch my ruler from right here and then I'm gonna lift from right here, watch. Now notice my fabric never shifts. I wanna share with you why. See this ruler right here? Do you see the flex in the ruler? Once again, we don't do anything by accident. This ruler is made out of PVC. The reason why we did that is to eliminate the shifting of fabric. Remember, we're a problem solving company. So let me get my one and one fourth inch strip out of the way. When you cut, once again, let's not, well actually let's go to the next size. So if we know from here to here is one fourth, let's go to the next line right here. So let's follow it up. There's the arrow and there's the arrow. So let's follow it. So let's get a little pointer right here. There's the arrow, there's the line, let's follow it up. There's the arrow. So let's follow the arrow. So what does this say right there? Two and one fourth. So we know from here to here is two and one fourth. So let's go ahead and cut a two and one fourth inch strip. So know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna square it right there. I'm gonna move this piece out of the way. Then I'm gonna come right here. Since I know from here to here is two and a quarter, there's my two and a quarter, there's my two and a quarter inch strip. Now, let me, this has got a little, a uh, little fray here, so let me cut this fray off there so it's nice and flat again. Let me cut the seam out over here. So let's take this material, get a piece here. Let's take this right here and let's cut, uh, let's turn it around, okay? So we just did, we just did our one and a fourth and our two and a quarter, okay? So now let's flip it around. We have the same numbers, a different set of numbers, but same concept on the other side, okay? So now, get my little pointer. We have from here to here is one and five eighths. From here to here is two and a half. So what I like to describe this ruler as, this is my binding ruler. This has all my typical um, size strips for binding. Uh, or if you're doing log cabins or squares or something like that, that's also built in. So let's go ahead and cut a two and a half inch strip. If I know from here to here is two and a half, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna square it right there. I'm gonna move this right here, and then I'm gonna to move to here, and then cut just like this. Now, when I lift this up, I'm gonna pinch right here, and lift right here. Now, I wanna show you how incredible this ruler is. Look at that fabric very, very closely. By looking at that fabric, you would never know that was cut. You ready for this? Is that not absolutely incredible? That's a two and a quarter inch strip. I'm gonna to go to my very next product. This is my pride and joy out of all the rulers that I have ever, that we have ever had at Martelli. This is by far my pride and joy. And I'm gonna share with you why. Uh, and we're gonna to get to more and more exciting things. We're about to get to the templates here very, very quickly. And then once, once I do all these demonstrations on these products, 
Then I'm gonna get I'm gonna go over the whole thing and show you actually how to make the quilt and make it very very easily. Okay, so here's a, here's a cool piece of fabric. So let's set this down. Let's get all our little little phrase at the ends. The little make it nice and flat. Okay, so just so you know, one piece of fabric. This is all a solid piece of fabric. Now, how many times have you ever done a quilt and it's called for one inch quilt block or two inch quilt blocks or something very very intricate? Now this next ruler I'm about to show you. There's not a whole lot you can't do with it. One inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, five inch, all the way up to 10 inch quilt blocks. Um, log cabins, you can do squares, you can do charms, you can do layer cakes. This one ruler can pretty much do it all. Now I'm gonna have to move around the table when I do this just one time, but now watch, I'm gonna set these ruler down. Now my strip ruler, if you notice, it has a bunch of strips in it. Now I'm gonna share with you what is a little bit different from what we have, what than what's on the market now. Right now you have an acrylic ruler and your acrylic ruler has gaps in it. Looks Now I'm over going to over exaggerate this but I want you to see this. Let me move this out of the way real quick. It's got gaps in it like that. Can you see that gap right there? Now they put the gaps in there so you can put your blade in here. Now remember what we discussed at the very beginning of this video. This entire industry is based on accuracy. Now my question to you is ladies how can you get an accurate cut when you're cutting strips out with the ruler that has got a big gap in there if your blade can move? If your blade can move, that tells you common sense right there that your, your strips are not going to be accurate. The other thing you have to realize is you're using a ruler that has big gaps in it that slides all over the place. So not only are you trying to fight the ruler from sliding, you're also cutting with the big gap in there causing your blade to move. So let me show you what's different about our rulers. Notice every single line I have in my strip rulers there's a zero tolerance line in there. That means there's no room for the blade to move. So when I put the blade in there, that blade stays perfectly straight. Look at that. I'm not even holding the cutter. That blade's perfectly straight up and down. This should take your breath away. Watch this, okay? Just know that every line right here represents a half an inch. So half inch, one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, and you get so on and so forth. So you get the picture, okay? So now, Let's cut some one inch quilt blocks. Watch this. I'm going to take this and cut it. I'm going to move my salvage right there. If these are half inch, I know that every two is an inch. So I'm going to cut and I'm going to move it down two and I'm going to cut and I'm going to move it down two and I'm going to cut and I'm going to move it down two and I'm going to cut and I'm just going to go down a, a, a little ways because I want you to see how accurate and how great this product is. Cut. Cut. I think I should be able to get two more cuts in here and cut. Now I want you to watch this, okay? I'm going to take this ruler and I'm going to pinch right here and I'm going to lift from the other side. I'm going to lift really slow and I'm going to break the vacuum. Now watch the fabric underneath, okay? Lift very slow, okay? Now when I lift that ruler, I want you to look very carefully. You can't even tell that fabric's cut, right? So my next step, cutting one inch quilt blocks, is I'm going to come actually to the side of the table and I'm going to lay my ruler down just like, just like so, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut right here. This is all salvage, okay? So I'm gonna take my salvage and I'm gonna get my salvage out of the way. Now, I'm gonna cut, move it down to, move it down, just like there. And I'm gonna cut, move it down to, and cut, move it down to, and cut. Now I'm going to go down just a little bit because I want you to see. Now when I'm done with this and I lift this ruler up, you're going to be able to look at this once I move the fabric and without a shadow of a doubt, you're going to know that everything is exactly one inch. The last cut here, I should do it. Okay. Now I'm going to pinch and I'm going to lift this up once again really slow. Okay. Now I want you to, other than that little last part right there where I lift it up a little bit quick, let me take my salvage off right here. All my salvage pieces, all my salvage pieces, all my salvage pieces. Okay, get my salvage pieces right there. Now, obviously you can see right there. Right there though, where I did the majority of my cutting, look at that. Now you should be able to look at that right there and know once I separate this, that they're all exactly an inch without even measuring it. You know how you can tell? The fabric never moved. Now you ready for this? Take any one of those pieces, any one of those pieces and measure them. How incredible is that? So now think about your intricate work that you're doing. All your one, if your one inches, your two inch blocks, your layer cakes, your charm, whatever it is. This ruler can do an 
abundance of things for your quilting. Notice once again on my rule, I don't have the ruler. So what we have here with our rulers, we have rulers that never slide. We have rulers with no tolerance line, keeping my blade perfectly straight. We have rulers that trap your fabric to the mat, so if you bump it, it doesn't matter. You can just bring it uh, back to your original location when you started. And you also have a ruler that when you lift it up, the fabric never shifts on you. Do you know how many problems that these rulers have solved? We just came up with a strip rule, I guess, three years ago, and we, we are having major manufacturing difficulties keeping up with the orders from this, especially when we put it on Redline Direct. So there's my rulers. So the next thing that I want to get to is our, you know what, let's go straight from our, our rulers to our templates. In addition to the no slip strip rulers that I shared with you earlier, are these are the rulers for you ladies that I absolutely cannot convince to use your mat, that you've got to have the numbers, you need to rule it a measure, using your ruler to measure. So if you look at this ruler, we have a small ruler that's for our travel mats. Um, it goes all the way up to 14 inches and it's actually six inch, five inches wide. And then we have another ruler. Now we have probably about six or seven different rulers with numbers on it with different widths and different lengths. They range all the way from 15, all the way up to 24 inches in length, all the way from five to six and a quarter inches wide. Uh, this right here, as you can see, is five inches wide uh, and 18 inches long. Then we have another ruler that's just like this and it's um, 24 inches. And I think we may even have one up to 30 inches. Now, I showed you the no slip strip ruler earlier that's uh, 24 inches long that has, it's for your binding. Well, when you purchase the 30 by 60 mat, I give you the, the, the Martelli Sir Hammer brand 44 inch ruler that does the same thing as the 24 inch ruler that cuts all your own binding, but allows you to use it on the larger mat. And again, that's the 44 inch ruler. <clears throat> now, the last ruler I wanted to show you kind of, is combined with the table a little bit. I'm going to share the ruler with you and then we're going to kind of jump right into the table, okay? This right here is an angle ruler. We call it the T-square. Now, I have the 45 and the 60 degree angles built into my cutting mat already. So what we've done is I've put the uh, different size angle in your ruler. It's kind of like a drafting table, if you will. You're going to see a knob right here. <clears throat> I'm actually going to take this out of the table. You're going to see a knob right here and you're going to see a little um, point right there. I'm going to kind of put this in here for contrast so you're able to see that point right there. So if you look at the green background, that point, well, what you're going to do is you're going to loosen the knob whenever you're trying to do an angle, and you're going to put that point on whatever angle that you may want. That point right there, this point, is now on 60 degrees. So if you follow that point down, you're going to see 60 degrees there. Then you tighten this down. Now working in combination, combination with the table, it works something like this. I want a 60 degree angle, I'm going to loosen this knob, and I'm going to place this on my 60 degree angle just like this. I tighten this knob down, and then because I know my mat is accurate, let's pretend like I want a 2 inch cut. I'll start on the 21, I'll cut, and as you can see it's perfect with this 60, and then I'll move it down 2 inches, and then I'll put it right on that 19, make sure I'm on my 60 here, and cut. So I cut, move, cut, move cut, move, and I'll, I'll, do, I'll move it as many times as the table will allow me to. So this will cut any size angle from 22 and a half to 45 to 60 to 67 and a half all the way to a 90. But you're going to say, yeah, but Dave, I don't have that table at home and I'm not using that system. That's okay too. Every table that you have has a perfect 90 degree angle. Tables, that's just what they have. So if you want, because of the, no, the blue no slip that we have on the back side of the ruler, you can actually put the butt end of the ruler against the 90 degree table, just like this, and then put it on whatever angle you want. Now I over exaggerated that so you can see what I'm doing there. So let's say you want a 67 and a half degrees. <clears throat> you can actually take that, lock it down, and use the edge of your table for the, the 90 to have a gauge to do your angles. So again, this is the T-square, and if you're gonna buy the table, it slides back and forth inside the table. And if you're using your own cutting table at home, just remember every table has a 90 degree angle, which allows you to uh, use the T-square as a reference point. 